All right, class. So if you recall from last time, we were dealing with these variations of sine and cosine, right? Uh, A sine BX minus C plus D. Remember there's four buttons basically, all right? This made things taller or shorter. This moved things up and down. This would compress things horizontally and then a shift right and left. Uh, and here's some of the details, all right? Let's look at some more examples here. So our goal is to be able to look at a function and visualize the graph in our heads, all right? or look at a graph and write down a sine or cosine function. So if you look at this guy here, we could see that our A, absolute value of A anyways, is two, okay? So sine would normally look like that, but this minus here is gonna flip it upside down. So where it used to go up, it'll now go down. So instead we end up with something like that. And this two, makes things twice as tall. So instead of being between minus one and minus two, it's between, or minus one and positive one, it's between minus two and positive two. Now this guy here, the pi over two, right? That's gonna compress things uh, horizontally. Remember our period, two pi divided by whatever that number is, we call it B in here for some reason. All right, so, um, so if B here is, pi over two, the two divided by a half is four. Okay, so the period of this function is going to be four. So instead of zero to two pi, it's zero to four. Okay, so if you think about it, if you plug in values for x from zero to two pi, everything gets multiplied by that. What sine is receiving, I'm sorry, zero to four. If you plug in values for x from zero to four, what sine receives is zero to two pi. So it makes one full wave, all right? So that's why the period here is four, not uh, two pi. That makes this middle mark two, right? Y'all are used to seeing multiples of pi here. If you wanna scale that out, you just throw a pi in there by your X and then these become regular integers instead of uh, multiples of pi. I'm not going to do that one. Exactly. I guess we could. Why not? All right, so midline and all that stuff. Well, our typical cosine looks like this, right? Um, this minus sign is going to flip it, so it's going to look like this. And uh, 
the amplitude, instead of being between minus one and one, it's gonna be between minus 0.8 and positive 0.8, because that's the amplitude. Uh, instead of two pi here, this thing is gonna shrink everything by a factor of two. So this is gonna have a period of pi. And we could go through the math. Two pi divided by b, b here is two, so pi. And if you think about it, when you plug in values uh, from zero to pi, cosine is receiving twice that. He's receiving zero to two pi, so he makes a full wave. Okay, so that's why that two is a compression of a factor of two instead of making it, you know, a expansion here. And that's the whole thing. And of course, it keeps going. Okay, so it repeats itself over and over again. Okay, look at another example. This one's going to be a little more difficult. So this one has an amplitude of three. Let's see, our B value here is pi over four. Our C is pi over four. Remember the C is what's being subtracted here, okay? So sine typically looks like this, right? But this thing is making it three times taller. Okay, but now we have to deal with this stuff. All right, so um, first let's see, we have a compression here, right? So our period is two pi over b, two pi over pi over four. So two divided by a quarter would be eight. This thing has a period of eight. But wait, there's a shift, right? Now I can't just say I'm gonna shift to the right by pi over four, okay? Let me rewrite this in another way. The shift is what's being subtracted from x, not what's being subtracted from pi over four x. If I, if I factored out this pi over four, this would be an x minus one. Just rewriting the inside here. You can see that the shift, what you're subtracting from x is just one. Okay, remember your shift, your horizontal shift uh, would be uh, C over B or pi over four divided by pi over four, which is one. So our shift is one, so we'd have to take this and move it to the right by one. All right. So instead of being between zero and eight, it's between one and nine, and then keeps going. All right. Do another one. All right, this one's a cosine. The cosine typically looks like that for the base wavelength, right? And it's usually between minus one and one, but this guy here is going to make it between minus two and two, but that minus sign is going to flip it upside down. Okay. Now, uh, this is going to, there's no moving it up or down, so that's cool. This thing here is going to compress it by a factor of pi over three. So the period is two pi over b. We're compressing it by a factor of pi over three. So two divided by a third is six. So we have a period of six, but we also have this shift, all right? Now, since we're adding, that's a shift to the left, all right? Uh, when you subtract, it's a shift to the right. Our, our C here is a negative pi over six. We're subtracting a negative pi over six, all right? So our shift, Right, which was C over B, negative pi over six over uh, pi over three. Uh, yeah, so we get a negative, so it's a shift to the left, and the pi's cancel. What is this? One six divided by a third, so this is a negative half. So this thing is shifted to the left by a half. 
So we'd have to do this. Oops. So this would be like 5.5 and negative 0.5. Does that make sense? All right. So what's our midline? Our midline is zero. So it hasn't gone up or down. Our amplitude is two, right? The amplitude is the absolute value of that. Period, six, phase, shift is a uh, minus half. Or phase, shift. Okay, let's do this one. All right, so our amplitude is two. We're looking at cosine. Cosine looks like this. Um, that minus here is gonna flip it. So looking at that, uh, the two here, puts it between minus two and two. Um, but I'm gonna have to shrink this a little bit. This plus three moves everything up by, by three. So instead of the midline being at zero, it's gonna be up here at three. We need to move this up. And the amplitude is two. So this is gonna be one, three plus two is five. So instead of being between minus two and two, it's between one and five, all right, on the Y value. Uh, now we have to deal with this stuff. So the period would be two pi over pi over two. Two divided by a half is four. So the period is four, but we also have the phase shift, right? And our, we're adding, so that's gonna be a shift to the left. So our phase shift to the left is going to be uh, pi over pi over two. So one divided by a half is two. So this is a shift to the left by two. So we do this. So this thing becomes symmetric about the y-axis. So. And then of course it does this. Okay. So again, there's only four buttons, A, B, C, and D. Looks like far less than there are buttons on your PlayStation controller. So I know you can do this. Okay, this is where it gets difficult, word problems, right? Well, we have to start thinking. So we have a point rotating around a circle centered at the origin. Okay, so here's a circle centered at the origin. The radius is three, r, say three, r equals three. Sketch a graph of the y coordinate of the point as a function of the angle of rotation. So let's start with our angle, right? Um, now, remember on the unit circle, sine is just the y value. Sine of theta is just the y value. So remember, we don't have to just use the unit circle. Remember in general, sine of theta is y divided by r. We like the unit circle because when r is one, sine is just the y value, okay? But remember, if you think about the triangle, if this is y, this is x, this is r, sine was the ratio of this side to this side, okay? So we like triangles where this is just one, so the ratio is just the y side, but in general, sine is y over r. So that means that y is r sine theta, but we know the radius here is three, three sine theta, all right? And that happens to be our function. That's gonna tell us uh, the y value for any angle theta. We're just using the basic definition. This is a definition, sine theta is y over r, okay? And we could test it out if you want, like at an angle of zero, all right? This point right here, the y value uh, is zero, the x value is three. All right, up here at pi over two, uh, 
this point is uh, zero. The y value is three because it says circle of radius three. Okay, so if we plug in pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, multiply by three, we get three. So this is giving us the y value on a circle of radius three. We, all we're doing is scaling it by a factor of three, right? If they just said this is a radius one, we want the y coordinate as a function of the angle, that's just sine of theta. Sine of theta is the y coordinate on the unit circle, right? But here we're just saying, oh, it's a bigger circle. So we'll just make it a, the value three times as big. This one here is simple. Here's seven cosine. What's the amplitude? Seven. Right? The amplitude of cosine is one. You multiply everything by seven. No problem. This one gets difficult right here, though. Finding the vertical component of circular motion. So here we again, we have a circle of radius three, but it's been mounted with the center at a height of four. The point closest to the ground is labeled, all right, uh, as P. Sketch a graph of the height above the ground of the point P as the circle is rotated, okay? So this is where we're starting off. We like our angles to start over here, right? But they're saying, no, we're starting down there. So that's going to make things a little awkward, OK? Um, we want the height, right? Well, the height would be the y value, right, the up and down. So that tells us we want to use sine. This is going to be sine of something, OK? Now, the fact that we've moved everything up four that tells us I'm going to have to add four out here, okay? Because the height should have a this plus four. And the amplitude, okay, is going to have to have a three there, okay? So the y values need to be magnified by three. Um, the period is going to be two pi, so, uh, all right, this, it's a circle. It goes around circles. The period is two pi, so I don't want to multiply anything here. But I, I need to shift because we're starting off down here instead of right here. So this is a difference of pi over two. So I might want to subtract pi over two or add pi over two. I'm not sure which one. So let's think about it. Let's, let's try some test values. If I plug in zero, right, I get sine of negative pi over two. If I think about the unit circle, the y value down here is minus one. So sine. If I plug in zero for theta, sine is going to receive minus pi over two. Sine of minus pi over two is a negative one. Negative one times three is negative three. And I add four, I get one. Well, the height right here is one. So that works out. Does that make sense? Just following the little ball that's rolling around, you know, knocking over the pins and doing all this weird stuff like those YouTube videos. Set up all the dominoes. We could try another one. So if our angle is, say, pi, that would be pointing straight up. The y value here would be uh, 4 plus 3. The y value would be 7. So let's see what happens if we plug in uh, pi and make sure we get 7 out of this thing. So pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2, according to unit circle, is 1. And then 1 times 3 is 3, plus 4 is 7. So that checks out. So those two test points check out. So this is going to be our height. This is our height as a function of theta. Right? It'd been nice if they'd have had p over here, right? At the starting point. Then we wouldn't have had to have a shift. Okay. Now we're getting into physics. Simple harmonic oscillation, right? Simple harmonic motion. Again, this is every single thing in the entire universe can be modeled as basically a system of strings. Just adding them all up. 
or waves. Okay. So a weight is attached to a spring that is then hung from a board. As the spring oscillates up and down, the, po the position y of the weight relative to the board changes, uh, ranges from minus one at time x equals zero. So they're using x for time. I'd use the letter t for time, right? They, they want to use x, fine. So they're saying at time zero, the y value is minus one. So basically, uh, here's my x. I don't even want to call that x. I'll call that a different. I won't even label it. Now, here's y. So this is minus one. All right. And this would be uh, so at time pi. Uh, the y value is negative seven. So right here, I'm going to say minus seven. Okay. So you could imagine this thing. If I made this x, we'd have to take the spring and just move it to the right. Okay. So if we start here, it's going to look like that. If you let the spring move to the right as time passes. Okay. Because that's what the x is going to be. So that's what we're looking for, something like that. So now we have to come up with a function. Okay. Um, so we could use sine or cosine. Um, since it starts off right here, remember sine looks uh, like this, right? It's great to use sine if you're starting off right in the midsection, right? But remember cosine looks like this. So if you're starting off at a, a maximum or a minimum, you might want to use cosine. And that, that prevents you from having to shift. Remember, sine and cosine are the same one, same thing. They're just one shifted version of the other. So in order to avoid having to do a shift, you want to pay attention to which one you pick, how you pick sine or cosine. And that's how you pick them, whether it starts off at a maximum or a minimum or starts off in the middle. Since this starts off up here at a maximum, let's use cosine. So we'll use cosine. It's going to be something, something, something. So our mid midline right here, uh, what's right in between minus 1 and minus 7? Or minus 4, is that right? 3 and 3, yeah. So there's our, our, where our midline is. So I'm going to have to move everything down. Um, let's see, by 4. Okay, and now my amplitude here, though, is three. All right. Um, let's see, what do I need to do now? The period. So based on this, all right, it goes from the, ma from the maximum down to the minimum. So that's a half a period, right? Going from the top to the bottom, and it would have to go back up back up to the top again to have a full wave length, right? So if zero to pi is half a wave, our period here is going to be two pi, okay? So that means we don't have to do anything without the multiply this by anything, as far as I can tell. Um, and since we use cosine, we shouldn't have to shift this. All right, that's my best guess at 9.30 in the morning for this one. Let's look at their solution and see how close they came. Well, I guess they're not going to tell us. In the position. Go well. Yeah. Yeah. Cosine, cosine like this starts at time zero or at an angle zero, it starts off at one. Let's do some test points and we can figure it out if this is totally legit or not. So at they said at x equals zero, the output should be minus one. So this is y. Okay. So if I plug a zero in for x, I get cosine of zero, the unit circle, cosine of zero is one. 
So we multiply that by three. So that's three, subtract one, and we get, um, subtract four, we get a minus one. So this, this works out with this guy. Let's check uh, this one. If I plug in a pi for x, I should, all of this should give me a minus seven. So cosine of pi, according to the unit circle, is minus one. So minus one times three is a minus three. Minus four gives me the minus seven. So yeah, this is working out. Right. And you want to do the test point. Sometimes you look at the amplitude, but you might need a minus out here in front. This thing might need to be flipped, right? So throw, always throw in some test points to see how, how legit it is. And this one here, I think this is hard. This one right here, this is the hard one. Okay, Ferris will. So they give us these ugly numbers. So they say, here's a Ferris wheel, and its diameter is 135 meters. Well, the diameter is the distance all the way across, right? So the radius is half of that, which is 67.5, okay? So we have this Ferris wheel, and it, it, it completes a rotation every 30 minutes. So the period here, is 30 minutes, okay, instead of 2 pi. We have to come up with a trig function that is a period of 30 instead of 2 pi. That's not hard. Then they say they board, riders board from a platform two meters above the ground. So um, basically, this is two meters tall, and this is 135, right? total. So right here in the middle, this is 2 plus the radius. This would be 69.5. But this would be 135 plus 2, but this is at 137. But again, the diameter is 135. So the Ferris wheel is 2 meters off the ground, and it's rotating. Okay. Now, we have to do it like we did it with that previous problem. At time zero, they load down here. We wish it was like this, right? But since you don't load halfway up in the air, right? We have to kind of start that. At, that's our uh, time zero or whatever. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use t for for time. That's going to be our variable. So pointing straight down is time zero. So this one, uh, again, if we think about it, do we want to use a sine or a cosine? Okay, we're trying to model the height above the ground, okay? So at time zero, we're starting off at a minimum, right? So you might think, well, here's cosine, right? That's typical cosine, but we want to start off with the minimum. So maybe we want to do a negative cosine flipped over so that we start off at a minimum value, okay? So that tells me I would need a negative cosine. All right. Uh, the amplitude is uh, the radius, 67.5. That's the amplitude of this thing. But I've shifted up. The center of this guy is shifted up uh, 69.5. Okay. That's where our midline is. Okay. Um, now we have to deal with this stuff. So that's all the vertical stuff. Now, now the, the, for the shifts. Um, now, this shift here, right? Uh, we need to have the angle shifted. Our phase shift should be by uh, pi over 2, right? Because it points down. So we're going to have to think about that stuff, right? We're going to have our T here. And then we need to figure out what our B and our C is. Well, we know the period is 30 minutes, so let's work with that. The period is 2 pi over B. This needs to be 30 minutes. Okay, so we're going to figure out what B is here. So that means B is 2 pi over 30, which is pi over 15. So I need to put a pi over 15 right here. So that's going to scale this thing uh, 
horizontally so that the period is 30 minutes. All right, so this thing though, time zero needed to be down, straight down instead of to the right. So let's try to figure out our phase shift here. Um, we needed we needed a shift by pi over two. Let me see here. Oh, that's right. We don't need a shift. If we were using sine, we would need a shift. Yeah, we don't need the shift because we made it like that. We're starting off down here, so that's the whole thing. In the last class, I used shot used sine, and so I had to deal with this shift, which made things more complicated, right? Uh, so this should work. Let's let's do some test points. At time zero, we should be at a height. This is our height as a function of time. We should get two out of this thing. So let's see. If I plug in a zero for time, I'm taking cosine of zero, a unit circle. Here's zero. Cosine of zero is one. Then one times that is negative 67.5. And then I add 69.5 and I get two. So h of zero is two. That works out, right? Um, at pi over two, we should get a height of 69.5. So we want at, uh, what is this? What is that? That's a quarter of the way around. So if it's 30 minutes, a quarter of the way, we'll do a, uh, let's not do a quarter, let's do a half up there, I should get 137. So that would be uh, half the period, that would be 15 minutes, right? I should get 137. So if I plug in a 15 here, all right? So 15 over 15 cancel, I'm taking cosine of pi, pi is over here, the x value is minus one. So I'm getting a minus one times that gives me a positive 67.5. And I add to that and I get 137. So this is working well. So this, this works. So now, now you know sine and cosine. We also have tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. We have to be able to graph these, okay? A couple of things to know about tangent, in case you forgot. Okay, remember that cosine was the ratio of x to r. Sine is the ratio of y to r. Tangent is the ratio of y to x. It's really y over r over x over r. But the over r's fall out. It's just y over x. So by definition, tangent is sine over cosine. Okay. Remember your triangle, right? X, y, r. There's only three ratios, right? The ratio of this side to this side, or the ratio of this side to this side, or the ratio of this side to this side. Those are your three trig functions. The other three are just the reciprocals of those. So sometimes those three give you fractions, and if you take the reciprocals, you're not dealing with fractions. So sometimes the other ones are nice. So this is by definition. Now, one thing you want to look at here is the fact that since sine is odd and cosine is even, that makes tangent odd. Basically, if you replace the input with a negative version of it, the sine is odd, so you can pull that minus sign out front. The cosine is even, so you can throw its minus sign away, and you just end up with a negative sine over cosine. So it tells you something about the graph. It's anti-symmetric. And we'll see that here in a minute. Let's think about this. Here's our, here's our unit circle. And let's think about what our graph of tangent is going to look, look like. So there's my tangent of theta. Here's theta. All right, so we're going to use the unit circle to plot some points. Now, uh, since tangent is sine over cosine, let's look at zero here. If I plug in an angle of zero, this point here is what? Uh, one, zero, right? So tangent.
coefficient of zero is going to be zero over one, which is zero. So boom, that tells us that tangent goes to the origin. Okay. What about up here at pi over two? I mean, sorry, pi over four. This is where sine and cosine are equal. They're both root two over two, right? So we just get a one there. So let's say pi over four, I'm at one. All right, but let's go up here to pi over two. What happens when we go straight up? This point is uh, zero, one. So tangent being y over x is one over zero, and you can't divide by zero. All right, now remember your polynomials. If you got zero on the bottom, that gave you what they call the vertical isomptote. So at pi over two, there is no such thing as tangent. All right, so we put a dotted line there. The graph does not cross that dotted line. It can't. So let's think about it. Uh, what happens in this region here? Right here. So we want to think about what happens to the ratio of sine over cosine as we drag this point this way. Well, as we go that way, you can see the x values are getting smaller, but the y values are getting bigger. So as theta goes to pi over 2, tangent theta is y over x. The y is approaching 1, but the x is approaching 0, right? But they're both positive numbers. So if you take 1 and you divide it by something really, 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 really tiny, you're going to get something really, really big. So what happens to this graph here is as you get closer to pi over 2, this thing just blows up to infinity. Okay. So that's the right half of tangent. Now, the other thing you want to know about tangent is we just saw that over here you get 1. So sine and cosine are the same, right? Well, down here, sine and cosine are the same. They're both negative root 2 over 2. So tangent that way is 1. Tangent this way is 1. Tangent is only pi periodic. It doesn't have to go all the way around the circle. It only has to go halfway around for it to start repeating itself, OK? So let's, instead of going over here, let's look over here, right? Which would be down here on the unit circle. So down here, it's the exact same as up there, but all your y values are negative, okay? It's still, we're doing the ratio of y to x. So we're gonna get the exact same thing we got over here. We get all the same y's and all the same x's, except the y values are negative. So if we go over here, if I try to go straight down, Again, uh, the x value is zero. So we have this, we can't, we can't plug an angle in that goes straight down because the x value is zero and we can't divide by zero. So if, but down here, as we go over there, we're gonna get this exact same graph, but all the y values are negative. So it's gonna look exactly the same, but upside down. So this is your principal period of tangent, right? Remember for sine, we like to look at this piece. For cosine, we like to look at this piece. Of course, it repeats everywhere, but those are our favorite pieces to look at. All right, well, for tangent, we like to look at this piece, the one that's centered at the origin, okay? And that's the graph of tangent. And it repeats itself over and over and over again. And again, it has a period of pi, so for, Tangent, if you're manipulating it, if you have like tangent of bx, the period, instead of being 2 pi over b, is going to be pi over b, right? Anytime you have a, re, uh, a periodic function, you take what the base period would be, and then you compress it by a factor of b. So for tangent, instead of 2 pi, it's pi over b, because it repeats every half circle instead of every circle. Uh, you don't really have an amplitude, right? It's not really a wave. What, what you're going to see, though, is this point right here at pi over 4, you're getting 1, right? So if you had, like, 2 tangent, so this point right here, instead of being 1, it would be a 2 there. So that'll be kind of your reference point for when you're trying to graph tangents, right? At, when you're halfway to, <laughs> to the... Uh, vertical isomptote 
that's when you would normally get one. So uh, you, you double that point right there. So that's a convenient point to graph if you're graphing something by hand, what happens there, All right? A, a, a halfway from the halfway mark. I don't know how to describe that. All right, that's it uh, today, folks. Uh, until Wednesday.